Hey, Ivan from the EV Stock Channel here, and as I'm sure you've heard, Tesla stock has taken an absolute battering. It's dropped down to the same levels as of August of 2020, with a valuation of about $430 billion. And interestingly, buying Tesla stock back in August of 2020 was relatively easy, as there was plenty of positive sentiment, unlike what is currently happening. So let's cut through the noise and compare Q3 of 2020 to Q3 of 2022 to see the progress that has been made in that time from when Tesla first hit a $430 billion market cap. But before we begin, thank you to all the Patreons that support the channel, and as always, all content is my opinion only and not financial advice. Okay, let's start off with production. In Q3 of 2020, Tesla produced 145,000 vehicles while in Q3 of 2022, that number has increased to 366,000, up 152%. And keep in mind, if we look at current average analyst estimates for the quarter, they're around 420,000. So Tesla have done what they have said regarding production and deliveries. Next, let's move on to revenue, starting with automotive revenue, which is up from 7.6 billion to 18.7 billion, while revenue from Tesla Energy is only up 100%. As we know, Tesla had to divert batteries from energy products to vehicles while the supply was tight back in 2020, but things are changing for the better. Tesla has built a 40 gigawatt hour battery energy storage factory, which should see Tesla Energy increase the pace of growth in the coming years. Next up, the most underappreciated aspect of Tesla's business model, which is service and other revenue, which is comprised of things like Tesla insurance, which have been rolled out to more and more people. Again, Tesla is executing flawlessly here, increasing revenue from 600 million to 1.6 billion in just two short years. Moving on to gross automotive margins, where Tesla have again increased from 24.7% to 27.9%, which is a direct result of Tesla removing parts and processes while incorporating new technologies like the Gigapress, for example. So we have seen substantially higher revenue and increased margins, which leads nicely to look at the next section, which is net income, where Tesla has gone from making a $300 million profit in Q3 of 2020 to a $3.3 billion profit in Q3 of 2022. Again, this is just a result of incredible execution. However, 2023 could be a challenging year with a lot of talk about a recession. I mean, how are Tesla's financials gonna cope with this uncertain period? Well, let's have a look. Interestingly, Tesla have reduced long-term debt from 10.6 billion in Q3 of 2020, all the way down to 2.1 billion in the latest quarter. And one could ask the question, have Tesla been using up their cash to pay down their debt? And the answer is no. In fact, Tesla's cash on hand has gone up 6.6 billion over that time frame. I mean, think about that. Tesla has paid down a total of 8.5 billion of debt while their cash reserves have gone up by 6.6 billion, while at the same time building out two massive new factories, Giga Berlin and Giga Austin. And in my models, Tesla should be significantly more profitable over the next two years compared to the last two. So the question is, what will Tesla do with the ever increasing pile of cash? In my opinion, I would say do whatever helps transition the world to sustainable energy in the fastest way possible. And from there, the money and profits will follow. So in summary, deliveries have gone up significantly, as has revenue, automotive margins and net income, while at the same time, Tesla has established a rock solid balance sheet by almost eliminating their long-term debt while increasing cash on hand. To me, this has been, again, incredible execution by the whole Tesla team. And yes, what we have just covered is only one angle of Tesla, and we will also need to look at other things 
like future demand and also what's in store for Tesla over the next two years and beyond, which will be covered in a future episode. So while there's been a lot of noise out there, there's also a lot of fundamental data points and it's up to you as to what you want to focus on. So to conclude, Warren Buffett has said, in the short term, the market is a voting machine, but in the long term, it's a weighing machine. And in time, we will see how things play out. So till next time, do your own research, think for yourself, and I'll catch you guys in a future episode.